Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosal. This is my tech channel. A lot of focus on Linux and a lot of focus on backups and archival. And uh, today we have a software that kind of bridges between these two worlds because it is a cataloging software that can work on Ubuntu Linux. I'm using Ubuntu uh, 2204 LTS and uh, running this program called VVV. And today we're going to take a look at uh, VVV, how it works. Um, triple V, I think, might just be easier to call it because it's a really, really useful uh, software that um, I just discovered recently by posting on the Data Hoarder subreddit. Someone uh, recommended a cataloging software to me and um, I have just got around now to checking it out. So if, like me, you are using optical media for backup and archival, this is my uh, one of my trusty M-Discs. This is actually a real, real game changer because it creates a very efficient way of cataloging your library that is better, a lot better, a lot more clever than using Google Sheets, which is what I have been doing. Um, and for that matter, this, this is my kind of system for uh, just labeling the M disks is uh, I write on them, finished video, the date 1905-22, and uh, then I put them in their uh, jewel cases, and that goes off. Now, I tried to create a labeling system here. You can see A011 that I actually might go back to because it would work very, very well with a digital catalog software like VVV. So let me show you guys what the big deal is with this uh, product. So I've just uh, connected, or I'm just going to connect now, an M-Disk, and we'll see how we can copy over the file structure into our catalog. Okay, so the M-Disk has gone into my uh, Blu-ray M-Disk burner, the one that uh, kind of crapped out a few days ago. It's still reading them, as you can see, um, but it's not writing Blu-rays anymore. So I guess it's kind of half half died, uh, to be to be more accurate. So um, as you can see, my M-Disk has just come up there. It's uh, called YT1122. So it's YouTube videos that I did in uh, November of 2022. By the way, the my first M-Disk was in May of 22, so I it still reads perfectly, so I can at least confirm longevity of uh, well, not even two years. So that's really not really not much, but um, I do plan keeping track of the of it uh, every few years just to see how it holds up. Uh, so this is the uh, the contents as you can see. It's basically just some MP4s of my uh, YouTube videos and a few podcast episodes. Um, and this is kind of typically what I put on my average M disk. It's mostly YouTube, uh, podcasts, whatever. So I'm just going to move that over to the side. And this is where the magic begins of uh, VVV. So what you want to do is when you have your optical media finished, um, burned and mounted on your system, you click on catalog and watch how this works. So I tell it to catalog a volume and then I tell it where that volume is. Right, so uh, my YT1122 disk is here and I can click on open and now I just need to give it a volume name. So I can call it YouTube, whoops, you, uh, YouTube vids1122. Now I've talked about 321 backup so many times that I, I know I'm sure people are getting sick of hearing about it, uh, but I do 321 so I do two copies of every disk. Um, so if you did want to call it... Um, you know, uh, on-site, off-site, you could record that. I don't see the point of uh, cataloging each disk because that would create a bunch of duplicate uh, data. But uh, this is where I mentioned my my initial labeling system, A011. My thinking was to give each disk an identifier uh, to, and this would actually work really, really well here. So this isn't A011, but let's just say for simplicity, I'm going to call this A011. So I could uh, quickly know which disk this data is on. Okay, I hit catalog and I hear the lovely sound of optical media. The M disk is whirring, so it's actually reading from the M disk, and it's going to just take a second because all it's doing is pulling in the directory structure. Uh, it's not actually pulling in the files because that would take um, probably an hour, um, and that's it. So it's actually, I mean, that was what like five seconds to two catalogs uh, straight from the optical media, so really not bad at all, in fact. And what you can see it's done here is pulled in my uh, the disk, right? It's pulled in all the MP4s. Uh, so let's just see what we have here. We have name, size, 
extension, last modified date, uh, sample rate, bit rate, and length. So it's even able to uh, detect that these are videos and uh, parse the length of the video. Maybe that metadata was all recorded on the MDisk, I'm not sure. So this is kind of half of its usefulness, right? What I can do now is actually detach the MDisk and it's all, all this information about what's on the disk has been stored to this VVV file. VVV is like the internal working format of this program. So there's a couple more things you can do uh, that are very important to know about. So let's just take one video here I have called Lentil Bulgur Soup, right? For simplicity, it's a video about me making a lentil bulgur soup as the name suggests. So I can append volume information here and I can add a bit of a description. I can say, let's say I can say whole bulgur recipe and I can click OK. Now what that has done is I've created a little bit of metadata a description for this file in the VVV library that I can then search for. Um, so, and this is the second function I wanted to show you guys, because this is where it gets useful, very useful. So just to be clear, I've ejected the disk, the M disk. So all this is doing is we're now searching through my local catalog. So I can say, you just heard the, the thing, you might have heard the thing just pop out of the disk container. So I can say description uh, or file name contains, what did I say, lentil bulgur soup or lentils bulgur soup, it makes a difference. Well, I know bulgur is B-U-L-G-U-R. So I can search and it's found lentil bulgur soup. Okay, the video, the MP4, and we can see that it is, um, how big it is, and we can see most importantly, this is the real utility here, we can see where it is. It's called Physical Path. It's on YouTube vids 1122A011. So I would have the software and say, damn, where is that Lentil Bulgur Soup video? And I can search for it in v in the utility and I can see it's on A011. And then hypothetically, theoretically, all I would have to do is search for A011 and I know it's on the disk. So that's the catalog function. I know in Windows, there is another program called Win Catalog. Um, I don't know if it's better or worth. worse. I'm not suggesting this is the very best one that's ever been devised, but for my purposes, this is actually terrific. Um, I just need now to uh, uh, go through the process of cataloging, um, what, about three years worth of physical data, which will be a interesting project of sorts. Um, now, we just a couple more things I want to do. So that was a search function, that was a cataloging function. And then in physical media, we have the volumes on the left and the contents of each one on the right. And I can kind of uh, just click on it and get the directory structure. The next thing, if you're watching this video and you're backing up your stuff onto physical media, especially, you're probably also a like-minded backup fiend. And you're probably thinking, well, what about the catalog? How do we back up the catalog itself? So let's firstly take a look at what kind of data size we're talking about um, with the catalog. So I'm just going to bring this in here a second to my screen so you guys can see. So the, um, where is, where's my archive? Here we go. Daniel archive volume one is 1 1.6 megabytes. So, um, 1.6 megs for the first disc. So I don't know, you know, you might get to hundreds of megabytes or even gigabytes, but you'd be cataloging an awful lot of, uh, a lot of data there. So, um, but that's not really the intended uh, backup approach. So the intended backup approach is, oh, there's one, one more thing to do to show you guys firstly, and that is that you can store this on a server if you want to. Um, just to repeat that step, I went tools, options, and then I have the option under server to connect to a network server. So I can actually store the VVV file on some server. Um, now for backups, uh, so you have a few options here. One is export. This is an export creator. This allows you to export your library as a CSV separated, um, whatever you want, give it a name, it'll dump out that data. But the backup is a different process and it is file backup. And you have the option here of creating a VVVBK. That's the backup format, just like VVV is the format for the uh, the catalog. So this is the way you're supposed to do it. So I can say, you see a creative one called 2201 catalog, and it's uh, it's uh, smaller than the um, than the VVV file. So this is, it's also another reason to do it. 
So I'll just say 22, 2021 catalog backup to save. And it gives me a little message saying that the backup was completed. Now, the question is backup best practices. What would I recommend for this? So I would say that it's a pretty small file. It doesn't take up a lot of space. I would personally um, back up the catalog every time I added a new something new to the catalog. And um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it on my look. It's it's so it's such a small amount of data that it's not really worth putting it on. Let's say its own. I mean that would be that would be cool if your backup catalog got really big. You could create an mdisk of the back of the backup catalog. Um, but uh, you could. Um, you could put it on, I would just put it onto Google Drive or cloud storage um, of some sort or another. If you really hate the cloud, sure, you could back this up onto a CD and put it off site as well. Uh, so um, there's one more thing I wanted to do. I, I didn't want to neglect because I had an idea. I thought it was maybe a clever, clever little idea. We talked earlier about the fact that we can append descriptions to uh, files in the catalog. So let's take um, the, where's my lentil video gone here? Object, right click object information folder information so you can do you have this description field and you've got free reign to do whatever you want and here's my idea we talked in the last video about checksums and how checksums are very useful in um, in uh, ensuring the files haven't been corrupted now if you really really wanted to go meticulous 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 you could run a checksum on every file on your mdisk and let's say you're doing md5 you could actually add your checksums, this is my bright idea for the day, into the folder information. And that way you'd be recording the checksums not on the disk itself, which is one option, you could do that. You'd be uh, recording your checksums on the catalog file. So this is, in my view, a amazing solution. Uh, I'm sure there might be, a, I, it's, it's good enough, it's so good, it's so useful for, for me that I'm, I have no reason to look for an alternative. Um, it's surely it's it doesn't look like a cutting edge program. There might be better ones in the market, but I think if you're doing optical backup and you're creating disks, sure this is going to add another five minutes per disk to the workflow. But in exchange for that, you're going to get a really really nice catalog of all your files. That most importantly is searchable. And if you are doing this, use cases would be let's say you're doing like me, you're a videographer and you're out shooting videos every day and you're creating tons of optical media, if that's your approach, a lot of people still do it, or you're a photographer for that matter, um, build up your catalog and if a client asks you, hey, uh, do you have the fo this photo from you know, such and such a place, you can search through your catalog, quickly pinpoint which physical media it's on and then go and do that. My second idea, besides the check someone, is to use go back to my initial system of keeping a sequential log of your disks, like first disk is A01 or whatever system you want to use. And you can also record that in your catalog and that would also make it easier to pinpoint where digital media is on physical media. Hope that was useful. Um, great utility. I wish I could remember who told me about this on Reddit because I would thank them. Uh, but a great find from the Data Hoarder subreddit. Great little utility. Um, hope this was interesting. And until the next time, uh, have a good day.